Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr James Gill and you've joined me for another clinical skills video. Today we're going to look at one of my well, favourite tools from my medical kit bag, uh, the uh, tuning fork, which we're going to use for vibration sense as well as for um, testing um, hearing in the Weber's and Rinne's test. Now, I'm sure many of you will have already seen that um, we've recently put out a, um, a, a video looking at the Webers and the Rinne's test, looking at sensory neural and conductive hearing loss. Similarly, we have uh, videos on uh, the neurological examination. Given previous discussions with students, I want to dig into exactly how it is that we're using the tuning fork, um, both the Webers and Rinne's test, and how it's going to be used when we're looking for sensation changes, particularly to the vibration sensors. There are several different types of tuning forks available. Personally, I prefer this type where we can hold the tuning fork by the base and applying a flattened piece of metal to the patient as a way of uh, stimulating them. The nice thing about these tuning forks is uh, the plate that allows you to easily grip um, onto their surface, meaning that we can manipulate the fork and easily apply it to the patient without similarly affecting the vibration. Now, there are two main tuning forks that we're going to use. One is the 512 Hertz fork. This would be used for the Weber's and the Rinne's test, particularly because the vibration sound is going to very quickly dissipate, meaning it's much more effective when we're uh, trying to test hearing. Then we have the larger 128 hertz tuning fork. The difference here obviously is going to be in both amplitude and vibration frequency. Now the 128 hertz fork is much better when it comes for um, testing vibration sense, which is what we're going to be looking at with regard to the dorsal columns. I'm going to tap it and place it on your forehead. You can now hear a noise in your head, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Which ear can you hear it in? The f uh, left, the right, or the centre? Uh, centre. Okay. So that's fine. So we've got a normal balance there. And I'm just going to do the same to the back of the ears. So if you could move your hair back so we can see the side of your head. Okay. So tell me when you can't hear the noise anymore. No. And again, bringing it round directly in front of the ear. Can you hear that? Yeah. Super. And final one on this side. Okay. So you can hear the noise? Mm -hmm. okay. Tell me when you can't. No. Okay. Can you hear it now? Yeah. Super, thank you. And specifically for the vibration by the ear, I'm making sure that the tuning forks are going directly into the ear as the sound will propagate in this fashion. So in terms of using the 512 hertz fork, we're going to apply it initially to the patient's mastoid process, waiting for the um, sound to disappear before moving it round so that the tuning fork prongs are directing the vibration into the ear. It's very important that the tuning forks aren't parallel to the ear because that will send the sound away from the patient. In terms of using the tuning fork, we can either strike it with a, t a tenon hammer or we can flick it with our fingers. It's also potential to strike it against another um, soft object, which would allow the fork to vibrate and thus sound to propagate out. That will also mean that there is the vibration coming through the end of the tuning fork, which the um, patient will pick up on. When it comes to using the tuning fork as a method of checking vibration sense, we'll strike it and place it on the patient's chest, specifically over the manubrium. At this point, we'd expect the patient to be able to feel both the metal being applied to the skin, but also the sense of vibration. We will then stop the tuning fork with our fingers, whereupon we would also expect the patient to no longer be able to feel the vibration. So what I'd like to do now, if you don't mind, um, I'd just like to use this tuning fork and uh, see if you can feel the vibration sense. So to start off, I'm going to strike the tuning fork and place it on your chest there. So you can feel the vibration there? Yeah. Okay, and tell me when it stops. No. Perfect. So we can see the difference between the two. This will form the basis of the test that will apply to the peripheries. 
again striking the tuning fork and placing it over bony prominence such as the distal phalanx. And please close your eyes and tell me when um, this vibration stops. No. Super, thank you. The very act of applying the tuning fork to the finger may be sufficient to stimulate the patient's sensation of touch, which will provide a false positive. So what we're going to do again is stop the tuning fork and we're going to ask the patient to confirm when they can no longer feel the vibration. Now obviously there's the question about what's the clinical significance of um, you know, paying attention to a patient's vibration sense. When we have neurological issues, we may get reduction in peripheral reflex, impairment of vibration sense, and position as well. If there's a problem with the posterior column pathways, then we're likely to see this loss of vibration sense. The dorsal columns are involved in sensation, particularly dealing with conscious appreciation of fine touch, two-point discrimination, proprioception, so understanding where the body is in space, and also vibration senses specifically. So in terms of diseases that might cause problems with vibration sense, we're looking at degenerative diseases or potentially demyelinating diseases. So two possible options are tabs dorsalis, where we're looking at a late manifestation of tertiary syphilis, thankfully not something we see today, but if it was, then we get neurological deficits due to the damage of the posterior columns here. Conversely, we can have something much more severe, that being subacute combined degeneration of the cord. This is seen when we have a vitamin B12 deficiency. The B12 deficiency causing um, subacute combined degeneration of the cord will lead to axonal myelination abnormalities. Essentially, that's going to slow down nerve conduction. So again, we're going to see things such as pins and needles and loss of vibration sense and proprioception. Whilst it must be said that most of these are very rare and um, sometimes outmoded um, conditions, such as um, our tertiary syphilis for tabs dorsalis, it's still important that students are aware of the posterior columns and how vibration sense is affected by problems with the posterior columns. Now previously you may have found expedition medics and orthopaedic surgeons carrying a 128 Hz uh, tuning fork in their kit. The reason being is it's been held that applying the 128 Hz fork to uh, the site of a suspected fracture may cause the periosteum to similarly vibrate and generate a pain signal suggesting that there's a fracture underneath. Now whilst I like uh, that is a possibility. We do have the problem that we can have false positives applying the tuning fork over a strain, for example. Now, a BMJ Open article in 2014, I'll put the link down below, did highlight that, clinically speaking, this isn't accurate enough to form a good uh, basis for your management of your patient. But frankly, if you're doing expedition medicine and you're in the middle of nowhere, it's going to add extra data to your decision-making um, processes in terms of whether or not you're going to abandon that um, expedition for that individual or perhaps the whole party. So yeah, maybe not the most accurate tool, particularly compared to the benefits of a full um, you know, x-ray, but if you've not got anything more than just um, your clinical intuition, it's certainly at least going to give me something more to try to help make those decisions. Hopefully this has been an, a useful overview of how to correctly use the tuning fork and it'll help you maximise your clinical practice. If there's any questions you've got, please drop them down below and we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Cheerio.